Hi, I'm Brooke from the Chattanooga Public Library and we're at the zoo. We're gonna take a great tour and learn more about endangered animals. Would you guys like to introduce yourself? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Tessa. I'm the group programs coordinator here and I'm excited to show you some of our endangered and threatened species. Hi everybody, my name is Perry Ann Edwards and I'm the school programs coordinator. Thank you so much for joining us for today's virtual program. We're excited to have you and we're excited to show you some of our animals. You might have noticed that Miss Tessa is holding on to some, some bamboo. She's going to use that later for one of our endangered animals that we're hoping to get up close with. You might see some giraffes behind me. They're really awesome. They just came to us in May and we're so excited to have them because they are an endangered species and that's what we try to do here at the Chattanooga Zoo. We try to help save endangered and threatened species and we do that through our accreditation. We're accredited through the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, also known as AZA. And AZA is this great organization that comes together to look at all the best new scientific research and talk to all the experts in the field and make sure that zoos and aquariums are giving the best care to their animals, contributing to conservation both here in the United States and around the world, as well as making sure that all of our animals get the best care and we're telling our community about them. So that is the top accreditation that you can have for a zoo or aquarium in the United States. We are very happy to have it because at the end of the day, caring for our animals and giving them the best experience and the best life is really what's important. And then letting our friends like you guys know how you can help them. So today we're going to go see some endangered animals, but I'm going to give you a quick second to check out those drafts because they're not on the tour schedule today, but they're real cute. <laughs> George is very interested in us right now, wondering what we are up to. George is um, our <laughs> largest giraffe right now. He's our oldest. He's about 16 feet tall, but believe it or not, that's a little small for an adult male giraffe. He was born as a twin, which is incredibly rare, and we think that might contribute to his smaller size. However, right now he looks like the big guy because he is the big guy. <laughs> Friends, this is Tessa again. We are here at our chimpanzee habitat and we have two of our seven chimpanzees ready to greet us. We are about to throw over some peanuts over the wall for them so hopefully more of our troop will come over to say hi. Um, before we get started I'd like to say that we got keeper approval. We are only allowed to throw certain foods over and for programs. So when you come to visit the zoo please make sure that you are not feeding any of our animals any food. Thank you guys. All right, we're about to throw over the food and hopefully more of our chimpanzee friends will come over. Okay. All right, friends, so we they're gonna to start tossing the food. If you wanna see their strategy, Tessa decided to go with the overhand. Miss Brooke's <laughs> gonna go underhand. <laughs> they're doing better than I am. The peanuts always end up on the ground when I try to toss uh, food the to ledge. them. <laughs> so it's going through their protective <laughs> mesh on top of their habitat. And we have that protective mesh to keep them safe and Sorry, to I'll keep our guests safe. Chimpanzees are wonderful. They are an endangered species found here. in Central Africa. They're actually found in the rainforest in Central Africa in about 21 different countries. So we're really excited to have our troop of seven chimpanzees here. They love to have their peanuts. So the reason we brought you over to these guys is to tell you a little about them. We have a troop of seven. We have two f males and five females. And that is pretty normal in the wild. So in the wild, they're gonna have smaller groups of about 10 chimpanzees, but they have what's called a fission fusion society. So they have small groups of about 10 chimps and then they come together in groups of 100 only a few times a year when things are really exciting. And they can communicate with their larger groups across the rainforest through a communication called a pant hoot. And it's really fun to hear. And they do it here sometimes as well. So it's nice to see that natural behavior. Here at the Chattanooga Zoo, to protect these guys, we have educational programs so we can teach people why they're so important and how to keep them safe. There are an estimated 170 to 300,000 of these guys left in the wild. And while that might sound like a lot, it's not. Endangered means that the animal is literally in danger of going extinct in the wild or not being found anymore and only being found in zoos and aquariums. 
we definitely don't want that. We love to have these guys here and they should be here because they've always been with humans, but we want to protect those wild places. So to protect those endangered animals, we do something called conservation. Conservation is just gonna be little things or big things you can do to help protect these species and their wild habitats or homes. So to do that, we try to make sure we tell people that they need a spot to live, right? So that is a lot of animals, 170 to 300,000, but really it's not enough chimpanzees. So we're trying to increase that number, which also means they need space. So one of their threats is gonna be deforestation and habitat fragmentation, which means that they can no longer get from one spot to the next spot in their habitat because there might be a road or a town in the way. So if we can continue to save their rainforest in their wild home, then they will be able to increase their numbers. Another thing that is threatening these guys is the pet trade because look at them. They're adorable, right? But I can promise you they are not meant to be pets. They're incredibly social and emotional and intelligent and they need their space in the rainforest. They would not be able to live in someone's home. It's just not going to be a good situation for the chimpanzee or the human family that took them in. But the real reason we wanted to chat with you guys today is because there is something so, so simple you can do to help us protect these guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to run over to another area and let you see the very simple thing you can do from home to protect these guys. Come on.
Oh, it looks like we actually did get a visit from one of our snow leopards. That is our boy Toshi. The best way to tell is Toshi has the white tip on his tail. And you might see he's kind of rubbing his backside on the tree. That is doing a scent marking behavior. He's kind of just letting the girl Callie know this is his tree. You might also notice there might be some toys in their habitat. Our zookeepers put out some enrichment. Just some things to keep them active during the day. Even though they're big cats, they are cats after all. And sometimes they can get the zoomies and they like to play. So our snow leopards can be found in snowy mountains in Asia. Think Afghanistan, Nepal, Mongolia. So even though they're snow leopards, we want to make them comfortable during the Tennessee summer. And what we do is they have an option to go inside their dens where we provide them air conditioning. Also, this tall rock that you see in their habitat is cold to the touch. So that's why they're gonna be laying there during the summer. But our snow leopards get really excited and comfortable when it starts getting winter time here. And they love a good snow day. So they have all of that thick fur that helps keep them warm in the snowy Asian mountains. So we wanna make them as comfortable as we can here in Tennessee. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the adaptations that help them survive. Um, so you know a little bit more about them. So the first thing people notice is their long tail. Well, in the mountains of Asia, they're going to be climbing steep mountains almost straight up. So their long tail helps them balance almost like um, a tightrope walker in a circus. You put your hands out. So their long tail helps them um, climb the steep mountains. They also have short, small ears and a short nose that helps them keep in their heat. And during the summer, you might see them pant with their tongue. They are expelling heat panting just like a dog does. We are filming on World Snow Leopard Day. And how the zoo helps snow leopards in the wild is we donate to what's called the Snow Leopard Trust. We donate money to scientists in the field. They set up hidden cameras to where we can hopefully get some pictures and videos of snow leopards in the wild. Because like I said earlier, they are really good at hiding. So scientists can have a hard time tracking them in the wild. Another thing we do with snow leopards here at the zoo to help them in the wild since they are endangered is we do our SSP, our species survival plan, or some people like to think of it as our dating service. So we matched up our boy Tashi and girl Callie. Tashi came to us from another zoo. And we're hoping next year Tashi might be old enough to where they can mate and we'll get some snow leopard cubs, which would be amazing because there's only about 3,500 to 7,000 in the wild. And though that might sound like a big number, that's not a lot. So we wanna do our part in helping get their number populations up again. And one of the top reasons that our snow leopards are endangered is for the fur trade. They have really soft, poofy fur that unfortunately people want to hunt them for. And then the other big reason they are endangered is because they interact with farmers and farms in Asia and they kill livestock. And then farmers, unfortunately, retaliate by killing them. But I get the farmers need to make a living. So we also work with um, making sure that farms are away from the snow leopard's natural habitat. So make sure you come out and visit them and keep your eyes peeled. They could be hiding right in front of you. Hi, friends. Thank you so much for coming along on this tour of the Chattanooga Zoo. We're so excited that you've been around to see some of our endangered animals. We are in our red panda habitat, and these guys are also endangered. And in your video, you might hear some little oohs because we're just really excited. So this is Avi. You can tell he's shaking a little bit. He's not nervous. He's just kind of waking up. And so he's going to come down to this platform to your keeper, Chris, and we're going to be able to do some tactile or touch training with him. So with our animals, whether they're endangered or not, we always want to make sure they're getting the best care possible. And sometimes that means we need to be able to get a closer look at them, put our hands on them, and make sure that they are feeling healthy. And so what we're doing is we're giving him grapes. These guys are typically going to eat bamboo, but grapes are like their favorite tree. And so it'd be like, you know, oh, I guess I'll make up my bed if you give me an Oreo. And so we like to give that high reward for letting them touch us, or letting them, they let us touch them. There we go, I got the words. 
And so we want to be able to reward that behavior because it's not a natural behavior. These guys are found in the mountains of Nepal in central China. And you can see he's got this beautiful coloration and it looks like he would stand out when I tell you he's arboreal or that he lives his life in the trees. But those trees have this really beautiful orange and red moss. So when he's up in the tree, it just looks like a clump of moss. And that is a great adaptation for his protection. These guys are, like I said, endangered. And so some of the threats that they have is loss of habitat. Again, we've got to protect our forests. And we can do that by making our voices known and letting people that we care about those spaces and we want them to stay natural, right? We can choose where we build our houses. Just don't build it in their homes. And then also another reason is because fragmentation. Again, towns and roads popping up, just kind of breaking up their forest habitat and their trails. So you can see he's going up to that higher spot and he's going to get some bamboo. So that's really awesome. These guys actually have the stomach of a carnivore. So you're like, why is he eating plants if carnivores only eat meat? Well, he's a weirdo and we love him. So there's nothing wrong with that. These guys had to adapt to their habitat or again, home. And there wasn't a lot of food sources other than bamboo. So over time, they were able to start eating bamboo. And even though their stomachs haven't changed to process that bamboo, their lifestyle changed. And so they've changed their lifestyle by just being kind of lazy. <laughs> they just don't have the energy for a lot of activity. And so they spend their days up in the trees, sleeping and looking for bamboo. These guys eat about four and a half pounds of bamboo a day, but they're picky. If you can see, he's only eating the leaves. He's not gonna eat the stem or the shoot. And so that is a lot of leaves. It can be up to 20,000 leaves in one single day. So again, that's a lot of food for them to find, and that's a lot of plants. So we need a lot of space for that bamboo to grow. We need space for the animals to live and for their food to live and grow, like that bamboo. So another thing threatening these guys is going to be the fur trade. You can see he has this long, beautiful tail, and some cultures will actually use that tail as a cap, kind of like here in the United States for a long time we had coontail hats. Well, Technology is amazing and we can do some amazing things with fabrics and dyes so we could make fake red panda tail hats instead of using the real thing. So again, if you ever go around the world and you see a red panda tail cap, you want to make sure that it's not from a real red panda. So another way that you can help these guys. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's what scientists do. They ask questions and they explore and they figure out new things about the world. So these guys are also a part of that SSP or species survival plan that we talked about with our snow leopards. So he was actually born as a result of that. He was born here at the Chattanooga Zoo in 2016 in July to his mom and his dad. And he um, was raised here, which is why he's a little more comfortable coming down than his friend Willa. Willa is his... Um, girlfriend that was suggested for him and she likes to kind of hang out up in the corner whereas Avi's more used to coming down and seeing people because he was partially hand raised by our keeper so he's been around people and being socialized for a long time but again once the bamboo and the grapes run out he's like peace out I'm going back up my rock and that's okay because that's his natural adaptation and his natural lifestyle is to sleep a lot and we want to let him be able to do that so these guys can have up to four babies at a time, but it's usually only one to two, and they're only with mom for the first year. After that, mom goes on and tries to have another family. These guys um, live solitary, so the fact that Avi spends a lot of time with his girlfriend, Willa, is not a normal behavior you would see in the wild. Normally, they're going to live by themselves and just kind of hang out to start that family, and then um, mom's going to raise the baby that year, and then uh, start it over, the process over again. So here, they will cuddle together and spend time together, and we hope that's a good sign that hopefully they will decide to start a family together, but it is their choice. Um, and then uh, we can continue that legacy of the species survival plan because there's only about um, 
2,500 to 10,000 of these guys in the wild. And again, 1,000 sounds like a lot, but it's really not enough. And so we want to make sure that we have animals in human care at accredited zoos and aquariums amongst our AZA, or Association of Zoo and Aquarium Organizations, where we can make sure these guys are healthy and their genetics or the code inside their body that makes all of us unique is going to be diverse so that they can stay healthy. And hopefully one day in the future, we'll be able to restore their habitat and slowly start to introduce them into the wild. But at the end of the day, even should the worst happen and they go extinct in the wild, we'll still have them here at zoos and aquariums. But again, you don't have to be worried because there's a chance for us to get involved now. A great way to get involved is by visiting your local zoo or aquarium. Because again, like I said, we contribute to conservation. We have what is called a wild encounter here at the Chattanooga Zoo. And it's something that you have to schedule ahead of time, but it's a chance for you to get close to some of our animals. So this test is going to demonstrate pretty much what you do in a wild encounter. You come down and you offer a great to Avi. And then if he's feeling like it, you can have a touch opportunity. But you can see that she's pulling her hand back right away because again, he doesn't want to be too involved with people. So we have to respect him. Also at a wild encounter, you also have to respect that you're on the animal's time. Everything here is a choice for them. And so sometimes their choice is to lay in bed. Oh, I wish I had that option. So <laughs> these guys, are a great wild encounter opportunity. And any time you come and do a wild encounter, whether it's with our red pandas or one of our other amazing animals, we contribute some of those funds to conservation. And Thank you so much for joining us for today's virtual program. It's been great learning about how the zoo helps endangered and threatened animal species. Now, how can you help? Well, you can go to chatzoo.org and check out their website. It'll show you all the ways that they help and that you can help. You can donate with their EcoCell program and check out the Snow Leopard Trust, the Red Panda Network, and the Rainforest Trust. On the Chattanooga Zoo website, you can also learn how to visit the zoo, what animals are at the zoo, and other ways you can support the zoo. Thanks again, Tessa and Perry Ann, for this awesome tour of the zoo. And thanks to the Chattanooga Zoo for letting us visit. If you're looking for some books to read about endangered animals, just go to chatlibrary.org and put the books on hold that you're interested in reading. Then you can pick them up at the branch nearest you. Thanks for joining us.